Good morning guys! We are in the kitchen today doing some experimenting. My TikTok algorithm has been giving me a bunch of videos about preserving and canning dairy and I have been really curious to see whether or not it is something A that's okay to do and B um, something that we would actually like as a product. Um, obviously I am well aware that the USDA does not um, have any official guidelines or basically officially says that dairy cannot be canned um, but considering the number of homesteaders and preppers and canners and stuff that I have been seeing recently um, doing this kind of thing I know that there is kind of a group mentality about it as far as it being okay. It is something that people have done before, people do traditionally. Um, it basically just means that the USDA hasn't done any testing to actually prove whether or not it is safe. And so if you are going to can your milk, um, keep that in mind. I am just doing it literally today because it was something I wanted to try. Um, I like doing little experiments like this and I just kind of wanted to see if we would even like it. Um, a lot of the times these like smaller videos or people that I see, they do the thing and they do a really good, good job explaining it and how to do it, but I'm really interested in how, what the differences are. Like, does it actually taste like milk? Is it any good to actually drink? Um, what kind of flavors does it end up having um, and stuff like that. So I thought we would go ahead and do some canning of milk. Um, I've got some whipping cream here as well as sour cream and butter. Um, I've never done any of these before. I am just following general things that I've seen on the web slash online. I did some <laughs> research. I looked at, I think, modern survival living. Um, there's a TikToker called Funny Farm Daughter um, who follows her mom. She does a milk canning video and a butter canning video, I believe. So I'm just kind of taking what resources I can using common sense and I'm just doing this basically to have some fun. I am just curious about what it's all about. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my butter melting on the stove. Um, you need to get that liquid in order to get it into the jar and then I will be putting my cold milk, whipping cream, and sour cream into cold jars. These jars will then be placed in a cold canner, and that is how we will be processing them. Currently, you can use salted butter or unsalted butter for this process. I happen to have quite a bit of unsalted butter down in the freezer, so that is what I am working with today. So as far as I understand, you can use any percent milk that you would like. Um, be aware that the whole milk will probably have more fat solids rise to the top during the process, but supposedly you can just shake that up and mix those back in. So I am going with the regular milk that I would buy, which is whole milk. And we're leaving an inch of headspace on these guys. And one thing that is a little bit different is you do not want to wipe the rim of your jars with vinegar. Um, vinegar obviously will uh, turn your milk sour. Um, it's what you can add to your milk to make things like buttermilk. It's also what you usually add to milk if you're making like a soft or quick cheese. So when you are wiping your rims down and using dairy products, it is best to go ahead and just use water, or so I've been told. And then these will just go straight into the cold canner. I 
Next we have our whipping cream, same process. Lastly, we have the sour cream, and I am putting them in one of these wide mouth jars because I feel like if I'm able to actually use it, that will be the easiest to get it out of. No one ever really mentioned um, about anything about bubbles in this. Um, obviously, there's not a whole lot of official guideline for it but um, I'm just following best practices and trying to make sure that there are no air bubbles in my sour cream here. And something they did mention specifically about sour cream, obviously it is a little bit thicker in consistency and they said that after processing, it does split a little bit, but you should be able to just stir it back together and it turns out fine. So we shall see. Last but not least, we have our butter. Since our butter is hot, I went ahead and put my glass jar into a bowl of hot water just to warm it up a little bit so that there is no thermal shock and risk my glass breaking. And this just get po gets poured straight in from what I understand. If you wanted to skim the milk solids off the top, you could do that and you would end up with ghee. But since I am trying to see how this works with everything in it, I am going to go ahead and just do it this way. So I have my canner here filled with our questionable milk products and we are going to get them started. It is a cold canner. We're gonna get the heat on them, get the top on them, and it has the normal 10 minutes of steam venting before putting the weight onto your vent. Um, once it reaches 10 pounds of pressure, that's it. Um, there's no extended processing time of 25 minutes or 75 minutes or however long. You just bring the whole thing up to 10 pounds of pressure. At that point, the heat goes off. You take it off of the heat source and you let it cool down. So everything is out of the canner and it is cooling down here on the counter. From first glance, the milk and the cream look exactly the same as they went in. Um, no real color changes. Um, obviously, I, no, I can't open them and taste them right now, but we will do that. Um, I am going to get these cooled down, um, get one of them in the fridge and do a taste test uh, probably tomorrow and tell you guys what I think as far as if there's any been any taste changes, um, what I might use it for, and overall kind of how it turned out. Um, as far as consistency, 
they all look the same except for the sour cream. The sour cream has definitely changed somewhat. It looks like it has split into a curds and whey situation. Um, I'm not sure if that is what they were talking about having to stir it back together or not. Um, so I will definitely take a closer look at that once it's cooled down. And as far as the butter goes, I will just be turning it upside down every couple of, I don't know, 15 minutes to half an hour to reincorporate those fat solids which have sunk down to the bottom. So we're done for today. I will bring you back tomorrow when I have everything kind of cooled down and ready for a taste test. Part two has been uploaded. Just click the link. Thanks so much for watching, guys.